why is it that life is the only thing that can produce value? Well, the example often provided by objectivism is an example of an indestructible robot. So, right, it's the closest idea we have to think that's like man, but that if we had an indestructible robot, it couldn't be destroyed. It could never cease to be able to do whatever it does. But if nothing could ever stop this robot from existing or losing its life, then what things would matter to the robot? The very essential certainly wouldn't matter. You could put the robot underwater all the time, and it would be just as happy or not happy, or whatever the robot would be as if it were up in the air. It doesn't matter. Nothing affects this robot, so since nothing affects it, it has no concern with anything because those things don't affect it. So that is the general idea behind why life, something that to a person who chooses to maintain their life, uh, it is only that choice to maintain that gives rise to values. Because values ultimately are the things that I want to keep because those things maintain my life. Now, objectivism holds that there are, in particular, three core values uh, that we can look at and follow, at the very least. And there are certainly more values than this, but there are three core values that we start with. The first one is reason. The second one is purpose. And the third one is self-esteem. And these three values are laid out uh, in the quote below, so let's go ahead and look at that. My morality, the morality of reason, is contained in a single axiom. Existence exists, and then in a single choice, to live. The rest proceeds from these. To live, man must hold three things as the supreme and ruling values of his life. Reason, purpose, self-esteem. Reason as his only tool of knowledge. Purpose as his choice of the happiness which that tool must proceed to achieve. Self-esteem as his inviolate certainty that his mind is competent to think and his person is worthy of happiness, which means is worthy of living. These three values imply and require all of man's virtues, and all of his virtues pertain to the relation of existence and consciousness, rationality, independence, integrity, honesty, justice, Productiveness pride. So, these three values, reason, purpose, and self-esteem, are the <clears throat> beginning, uh, according to objectives. And once I discover and I try to follow these values, I then take certain courses of action. Right? But those courses of action are actually known by a particular word or name. They're uh, objectivists refer to them as virtues, um, and that's all a virtue is. It's just an action that achieves a value. So uh, virtues ultimately are the concrete actions that we take. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how the objectivist philosophy lays out the roadmap from existence to consciousness, coming to these concepts, gaining a concept of life, using the concept of life to understand that I have life, then once I know I have life, I realize I have to think certain things are important, which takes me back into concrete action, the actions that I take to sustain my life. Now, an example virtue, just to give you an idea of uh, the virtues, is productivity. Um, and it says here that productivity is, the virtue of productivity is the recognition of the fact that productive work is the process by which man's mind sustains his life. The process that sets man free of the necessity to adjust himself to his background, as all animals do, and gives him the power to adjust his background to himself. And this comes from a book called Virtue of Selfishness. Um, it is a book that is a collection of articles on uh, ethics with regards to objectivism. And so this shows us that uh, productivity, which is a virtue pertaining to productiveness uh, or purpose, um, allows man to you know, take actions or says man should take actions that produce things. Because I have to produce things in order to consume them. Very simple, straightforward. I have to produce food in order to eat the food. Because I know I have to eat the food in order to live. right? 
So uh, just to give you an idea of how one of those concretes looks. Now, the next point is where uh, I think a lot of people get really interested in objectivism and aren't sure how to proceed with it. So the question is, so once I have all of these ideas and these values and these virtues, who benefits from them? How is it that I should act? And ultimately, with those actions, who do they help? Um, and from an objectivist standpoint, uh, the only person who must benefit in order for something to be ethical is oneself. Now, understand that that statement doesn't mean that you know, somebody else can't benefit from uh, an objectivist actions. And it doesn't mean that an objectivist goes out and steps on everybody in front of them either. Right? Go back to that quote at the very beginning with me, very briefly. Okay, let's look at that first quote again. And I will read it um, just to reiterate. Man, every man is an end in himself, not a means to the ends of others. He must live for his own sake, neither sacrificing himself to others, nor sacrificing others to himself. Man lives for himself. He acts with his virtues to benefit himself. Now, how do others come into play is a, a very good question. Um, is it important that others get benefits? Well, I would say that uh, that's certainly something that's debated. But an objectivist would probably say it's not important that somebody else benefit. Right? And I have a quote for that, that uh, others are not meant to be the beneficiaries of my virtues. Why is it moral? And this is uh, under F2 uh, in the section on, on virtues uh, and ethics. Why is it more to serve the happiness of others but not your own? If enjoyment is of value, why is it moral when experienced by others but immoral when experienced by you? When it is in, why is it immoral to produce a value and keep it but moral to give it away? And if it's not immoral for you to keep a value, why is it moral for others to accept it? Okay, and that uh, comes from Galt's speech back in Atlas Shrugged. So, objectivism says, no, the target of my virtues should not be anyone else. The target of my virtues should be me, myself. Right, and there's another quote for this one, from man himself. It says, individualism regards man, every man, as an independent, sovereign entity who possesses an inalienable right to his own life, a right derived from his nature as a rational being. Individualism holds in a civil, in, that a civilized society, uh, uh, or any form of his association, cooperation, or peaceful coexistence among men, can be achieved only on the basis of the recognition of individual rights, and that a group as such has no rights other than the in, individual rights of its members. So. Uh, and of course, the, the first initial uh, introductory quote would certainly apply here as well. So, um, it is important that man himself benefit. Now, that's not to say again that others can't benefit. And as we see in a room full of people, we interact with other people all the time. So, would an objectivist say that I being up here talking to all of you is bad? No, obviously not. But if that's the case, then how do we interact with other people, right? If I don't step on them, take what I want, then how do I interact with them? Well, you trade. You voluntarily trade. That's the objectivist concept uh, of how to deal with other people. Uh, we follow the trader principle. Now, interestingly enough, most people trade because they're getting something of value out of the trade. So this comes back to what I was saying, can somebody else benefit? And the answer is absolutely. That's the best way to approach life, is when we can trade with each other in such a fashion that both of us walk away happy. And if we can't both walk away happy, then we probably shouldn't trade. So the trader principle is how we interact. And um, there is a quote here that I'd 
uh, I'm just going to skip it because I think that between